What's going on guys? Welcome or welcome back to another video. Today is a very special, different type of video. I don't normally do this, but I just ordered a new mount from my favorite mount company. Every single mount in my house is from this company. I'll have to do a little clip of all the mounts in my house at home in Florida and in Venice, Louisiana. And I'm here with the owner, hey. Troy. <laughs> and we're gonna do a tour of the whole warehouse and everything, the shop. It is so cool. How many years have you been, you been doing this? We're in our 24th year of business. 24 years, wow. Yeah, 24 years, so let's go on inside and check it out. All right, let's do it. Perfect. When you walk into the, to the front door, right? This is the front door, right? Yeah. So when you walk in the front door, the showroom is right back there and it is beautiful. I have a nice clip of the showroom and you get welcomed by all these beautiful finished mounts and even some sea turtles. We just try to keep our showroom stocked with a good assortment of different species so that people that come up and down the coast, um, traveling up and down, um, back to their <clears throat> winter or summer homes, vice versa, they're able to check out the assortment of what we do and either take one to go or place the order um, once they get back home. Mm, nice. PVA, it's a partial film, it um, keeps our gel coat we're going to put down um, from sticking to the mold itself. And he, um, he lays down a layer of PVA, it dries, lays down a layer of white gel coat that captures all the details in the mold. And then once that's getting tacky or dry, we put down a layer of um, chopped fiberglass um, in that box. Layers of resin, um, we do about three layers, and what that does, it gives the actual length, uh, durability, and strength. From there, it goes into a grinding booth right here, and the guys grind it out, and then it goes into the assembly area, which we call the pit, and that's where all the parts, pins, eyes, feelers, hangers, all that, um, gets put it together so that it can go into the paint booth. Very cool. Blanks. We haven't actually done any paint work on these. We go into our custom flame cleaner shop over in Hudson, Florida, where he tricks them out with um, flame work, um, really customized airbrushing Lego work. He's super talented. Uh, I do all this. His name is James Hudson, and they're just really, really blessed to have him on our team. Uh, over here is our grinding bed. So you can hear it. Oh my gosh. The guys grind in here and we turn this on. <laughs> Adding the fins on. Wow. Oh my gosh. No way. Those are all the makers' teeth? Yeah, they're 3D printed. Oh my god. Eyeball. Yeah, <laughs> 
Oh my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> you got like every size over here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Gets for the back hangers. These are our sizing tops, so you guys grab oh, one and put it in the hole, and then they know what size they need to pull from. Oh my gosh. Back here. Kind of more eyeballs? Yeah. Oh my god. More eyeballs back there. Yeah, we kind of do everything right here. Once it's okay. cut, then um, all the pieces and parts get put together in this area. When they are ready to be painted, they'll have the eyes taped and oh. all of the green stuff you see is uh, 3M, it's called uh, um, acrylic glazing, and it's, uh, it'll be all sanded down um, so that there's no hard edges, and when it comes over and gets primed in the paper. Oh and then over here we have the one and only Jackie Shays, <laughs> 55 inch sandwich. Oh! Oh my god, it is beautiful. I cannot wait to put it on the wall. Oh my gosh, look at the pin. Oh, that, that's badass. So you definitely, you work though in layers, like you'll do... Yeah, so all the layers, these are translucent paints. So this is why it looks like um, yellow, and then blue. In between you'll get a little bit of green. Right, right. Oh, look at the wahoo. How they put it in my truck. Yeah, this is a, this is a T frame. It keeps the fish from going any direction. Wow. Can't can't come back. Can't go don't even need, don't even need bungee cords. Uh, smart. Thank you. So I just made it home. I just got the sailfish off of the wood that they put in the back of my truck. I drove two hours home south and it stayed in place beautifully the entire time. It even rained a lot on my way home and the sailfish got all wet, but um, it wipes right off. He said it's made of the same material as, a, as your car or like it's painted with the same thing as your car. So it, it just wipes right off. I'm about to put the new sailfish in its home and I'm going to take away the old sailfish, which, um, let me show you. This is my living room, <laughs> and this is the old sailfish. I got this from a consignment shop, actually, a thrift store, for really cheap. This was, you know, back when I was a lot younger, I really wanted a sailfish mount, and this is about all I could afford <laughs> at the moment, and I ended up just buying this as it was. I did not break that. I bought it like that. But it's a very old mount. Apparently, it is the original skin of the sailfish and the original bill. It's the actual bill, which I don't think they do that anymore uh, for sailfish mounts. I think it's an, more of an old school thing. So I do love this mount. It served its purpose for many, many years. But this sail was kind of, you know, bugging me, the color and everything, and the broken with the wood. I mean, it looks cool and rustic, but I have my living room. I just got this rug, and I just got this coffee table, and I've been decorating, so I was like, you know what, I think that's really bothering me, so it's time for a new one. Also, the other reason I wanted a new 
sailfish mount right here is because it kind of, I see how it's curved downwards. I feel like uh, once I got this TV, it kind of covered up the sailfish. So I'm hoping that having one that's more curved upwards will show more behind the TV. Look, it looks like I'm holding a real sailfish. <laughs> oh my God, it looks so good. Wow, what a difference. It's gonna look so much better on my wall. All right, let me take down the old one. How does it look? Oh, it looks so good. I think that the um, curved up style definitely fits better above my TV. I do still need to center it on the wall a little bit more, but I'm gonna do that later. I think it does look so much better. It's definitely improved the space in here. And real quick, I wanted to talk to you about the story behind the mount because typically when people get a mount in their house, a fish mount, it's to commemorate a catch, right? You bring in a photo of your fish to your mount artist and tell them, make it look like this. I want this exact fish on my wall so that when people come over, I can tell the story, right? I have a couple mounts in my house like that. Other mounts though are kind of more of a collective commemoration. Is that a word? To represent just kind of all the fish as a whole that I've caught. So like, this is not one specific sailfish that I've caught. I didn't ask Troy to I, and I didn't give him a photo and ask him to exactly replicate this fish, a certain fish. I just wanted a basic sailfish on the wall because I've caught so many sailfish over the years. Um, there's not really one specific one that I need on the wall. I just kind of want it to represent all of them as a whole. That's kind of what the story is behind the sailfish mountain in my house right here. But I do have some very good memories of catching sailfish. This one being one of my favorite uh, was a trip down in the Keys. I do have a YouTube video from this trip and it is a very old one. I need to recreate it because you can tell it was one of my first videos that I made. It's a little embarrassing. I had this printed out because this was on the table back there when I first got my sailfish, the old one that you saw. When I first got that one, God, and I don't remember how old that is. It's years old. Do you, do you guys do that? Do you put the picture of the fish that you caught next to your mount? Let me know in the comments below. Mm -hmm.